Hello, and today we have a Williams WPC CPU board on the pet test bench. This has been sent to me as faulty, and I don't know what the current status is. So, I'm just going to clean up all the sockets first, and make sure everything's in a good condition before I power it up. Okay, so using the correct PLC extraction tool, I have removed the WPC custom chip, and I'm just inspecting the socket. I can see some mild corrosion. So it might be worth just cleaning that up rather than replacing it at this stage. Um, I think there's a couple of pins on here that could do with a clean. So I'll clean it up and see if that makes it better first before we go removing this uh, 84 pin socket. Okay, so I've managed to successfully clean up the legs on this WPC Custom using a micro file. Uh, it's certainly worth trying to save these because these chips are quite expensive. Uh, even the sockets are fairly expensive these days. Um, so yeah, that should be okay now, that is quite nice and shiny, all the legs. Okay, and now we're inspecting the ROM socket and the CPU socket. Now the ROM socket looks to be okay, can't see anything wrong with that, but the CPU socket has some corrosion on it, so that's coming straight off and being replaced. And I've now replaced the original corroded socket with a nice high quality turn pin socket. And I'm going to refit the chips, well I'll clean up the legs on first as they're a bit dirty, uh, and then we'll give this board a test. Okay, so we've got the board powered up, and we've got the 5 volt light on, the status light is off, and the blanking light is stuck on. So this board has not booted up. Okay, so I've been probing the CPU, and the strangest thing I've noticed so far is that pin 37, which is reset, is pulsing continuously. At a very high speed even, it's not like it's watchdog. Normally a watchdog pulse will be once every second or so on. Uh, this one seems to be several kilohertz at least, I could check on the scope, but probably more important to actually find out where that's coming from rather than what frequency it is. Um, yeah, so that CPU is not going to run with the reset pulsing like that. Okay, so I've added this watchdog disable jumper here as the uh, reset line was pulsing, and we'll see what it does now. Okay, so, ah, so the status LED is kind of flashing, and the blanking LED is flashing, so it's kind of it's running a bit, but there's clearly a fault somewhere on the address bus or something that's causing it to not quite operate correctly. So uh, let's proceed to test further. So I've got a known good CPU and a known good ROM on board, and it's still not booting. So I'm measuring the continuity on the data address lines, and it seems that this ROM socket might be slightly intermittent. So I'm going to go ahead and just try and replace that. Anything intermittent needs replacing. You don't want to be, you know, chasing phantom problems caused by a socket. Right, so I was getting intermittent connections on the uh, WPC ASIC socket, so I'll remove that, I'm just cleaning up the area, and then I'm going to put a new socket in. Okay, so after fitting the new PLC socket, it looks fairly positive that the game's actually running now without crashing. So it's time to try in the machine. Okay, and so here's the ball in my Indiana Jones machine, and I'm just to show you, there's the identification label. There's a board there, and as we can see, all fully working. I just play tested it, um, made sure all the switch inputs were working and everything, and absolutely no problems at all. So that board is done.